Hey, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Subnautica Below Zero. Below Zero is the natural successor to the original Subnautica game, but does stand on its own two feet. Now, this opening sequence is different to what it was in Subnautica, where you had just the ship burning, you crashed, and that was the mystery of it all. What do you do? Now you're being guided through things. It's a bit of a a story-led introduction. Um, it's very linear. You can only go a couple, or you go one way really, and then that instigates the entire opening sequence. Things to watch out for as well. So as your protagonist, Robin, gets up out of bed, um, have a good look round. Make sure you pick up all the PDAs that are around. You're now being given a task to go over and find your friend Jeff, or Jevov, as it is, um, and in regards to this, a little bit of interbase exploring has to be done. Now, don't get all excited now because you've got no equipment, no scanner, nothing yet. Uh, but you can see your base is being very well appointed. Um, there's lots of items you'll recognise if you're a, an advocate of the old Subnautica game. Subnautica Below Zero does a good job of making sure that as soon as you jump into this game, you can see you're in the same universe. But obviously, look out a window, it's slightly different. At the moment, at the time of this video, which is November 2019's early access revision, taken in January 2020, um, it's much more polished. Still some graphical errors as well that need tweaking, that need to be tweaked in the original game. I'm playing this on an i7, 6th uh, generation, with a GTX 1070 card. Not a fantastic card, but it still holds its own. And Subnautica Below Zero does look fantastic. So as I said, making sure you go around the tables, have a good look, make sure you pick up the PDAs, get all the research data that you possibly can. Now unfortunately within this laboratory, within this little base that you find yourself in, you can't do much. You can pick up the PDAs, you can open and close some doors at the moment, but you can't inter interact with the coffee machine yet. You can't interact with the snack machine. You can't say, right, I know something's gonna happen. Let's stock up on crisps. And, and potato chips and all that sort of thing uh, and water and coffee before I go outside because obviously that's going to start a chain of events. So nice big windows, nice laid out base. Um, it's how bases should be. Some areas you can go into, others you can. Stepping outside you can see the space station, the Vespa space station in the air. You can see ships flying around going about their business massive radio antenna, you've got prawn suits, you've got a sea glide in a box, and you just know you're going to be wanting to use that later, but you can't do anything with it. These are tempting you. They're, they're telling you that these items are in the Subnautica game, and don't worry, it's a little bit of familiarity, like a little bit of a comfort blanket to wrap yourself in. Now going down the steps into the prawn bay, you can see some prawns that are damaged. The good old prawn suit, remember that? Yes, and some that are in other different states of repair. Looking around as well, you're going to see um, uneaten food by people. Now we're being told that there's a meteor storm coming in and that's all going to uh, result in uh, an exodus from the, the planet in escape ships. We're going to head on down, there's a little snowman um, and a digger in this area. Just check him out. Someone's had a bit of a laugh and made a snowman, traditional snowman, and put a rebreather on him. Now, we know we're going to need that rebreather, but you can't pick it up. You know you're going to need those, looks like, um, over-engineered oxygen tanks, double oxygen tanks, you know, high-capacity oxygen tanks, but you can't pick them up. That's a little bit frustrating, really, because you know something's coming. But hey, you know, it's Subnautica, and it's such a nice place to be. It's a nice colour palette for those people who, was, who are always playing space games and the darkness and the black. It really is a visual treat to the eyes. So with all that involved now, let's go up the other set of steps, just so we can have a look through the windows and see what's going on. Something I noticed when I was playing this earlier on, uh, before I did this video, A, you can get into the door, we know that. Look through the window, though. And there seems to be certain things like PDAs that tempt you and taunt you right at the back there on that desk. But you can't get in there, and that's just the end of it. It's only just going to tease you as to what may have been. So, with all that, we've had a good look round the base. Uh, there's our prawn suits, uneaten food. We've kicked the snowman over, opened all the doors we can. Let's head on over to our escape shuttle. Now... Here we haven't seen these in Subnautica before, but this effectively is a Subnautica space shuttle. Um, 
a little bit reminiscent, if I'm going to say, about what we've seen in other sci-fi, for example, uh, The Orville. A little bit sort of reminiscent of that, I think, perhaps. But it's a typical pod-based, you know, shuttlecraft. Okay, it's on its landing pad, you can't do anything with it. There's a thing around there that you can currently pick up. Um, there it is. So, saving screenshots to your PDA on the PC can be done by pressing F11. Now, with all that done, let's get on with it. And let's get round to um, invoking certain set pieces of this campaign. And we're going to head on down towards this path that is marked by path markers. Now, as you can see, these plants, they give off a bit of heat. And as you approach... They do, they, do the, they do the good thing. They, they, they approach and they warm you as you get a little bit closer. So, so far we've got no um, restrictions on air, because obviously we're outside, but no restrictions on food and water yet, because the game hasn't properly started. This is just invoking you through a story mode. Now, here we go. We're coming up to some sort of alien containment area. There's the path marker. You just know there's going to be some precursor stuff here. Like Jeff's GPS trackers here, but no other sign of him. Understood. Be careful. So there's a flashy thing. You can't pick that up either. Don't know what it is. Doesn't tell you. Into these lovely frozen caves uh, that sparkle. Moving through. Jeff. And we get to the Jeff. research area. Jeff. Now Jeff is gone. Who am I speaking to? Ooh, look at that, everybody. Alien technology, alien AI speaking to us. Definitely alien, definitely precursor. You know, I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, again, fans of Subnautica would be familiar with this type of architecture as well. Let's get over and let the story unfold a bit. So we've got, a, on the right-hand side, a coffee machine. We've got some microscopes. We've got other items. The, you, these you can't... Um, interact with. However, you can interact with the coffee machine. You can click it twice and you can get two cups of coffee. Worthwhile if you gather on what's coming. So, click it twice. All it can do really is, is help you out. Pick up a PDA there. Damage sustained. Rebooting the Subnautica alien sanctuary is saying its power is low. Jeff isn't here. Now if we go over, uh, we could possibly put a tablet in up. there if we had I one, but we haven't. So that's going to be the aim of the game, I think, really. At least in the early way. stages, is to gain hold of a tablet, get hold of a tablet, find a way back to this point, stick the tablet in, and then go forward into another part of the game. So there's our two cups of coffee. Old Jevov is nowhere to be seen. We've got no tablet to insert. So let's head on back out towards our escape shuttle. Get a bit more coffee as well while we're on the way. So back the way we came. Now off to the left hand side there's a little antechamber sort of cave. Don't know what this is there for. Nothing there so far. You can't jump up into it. It might come into things later on in the game. That might be the way how you gain access back into it. it seems to be a cave-like structure uh, and uh, an opening uh, past that but of course your little legs can't jump high enough and you can't climb high enough to get up there so back out the way we came moving along down back through the path glowy thing is still glowing we still can't do anything with that and you've got a landslide caused no doubt by uh, all the disturbance from the meteor shower that's hit the planet while you're in there talking to the alien sanctuary. So, only way to go is over these steps, over these rocks. More meteors hitting through the atmosphere. It's all starting to come down to it now. Very spectacular. Something to look at starting to build peril and subnautica does that really well so does subnautica below zero you're starting to get that sense of earnestness that urgency we have your ship on radar i'm not on that ship who is there's your escape ship thank you very much 
Thanks, Jebov, if that's you. He's gone straight away. And here we are, we're stranded now on a planet with a meteor storm coming in. But so far, you've got your sister up in the Vesper, looking out for you. Big, big sister is watching you. And you can see some familiar plants poking up through the ice. Again, more and more meteors coming down in the periphery, as yet not impacting you. And there's your base ahead of you. And here comes a huge, ginormous landslide coming down, crushing the base, hiding the base. You can't get hold of any of your equipment. Knocks the communications tower. You've lost contact with your sister up, up in the sky. As you start your way down, this is where things start to get real. And Subnautica Below Zero starts to get into itself. Ice shattered, you've lost your ladder on the other side. No chance as yet as getting back to your base, and now you're in the familiar underwater, under the sea environment that we all know from the original Subnautica. I'm going to make use of um, air pockets as well at this stage of the game. You've got health, you've got food, you've got water, and of course, keep an eye on your left hand panel for air. Make sure you don't dally about. And make sure you get to an air pocket as soon as you possibly can. Oxygen. It's, the devs are going to hit just right so you get a little bit of peril, a little bit of suspense. Ooh, you know, am I going to run out of air? Ooh. But no, you can recharge your air here back up to 45, which is an initial starting air point. Then you can head back out through that cave entrance or cave exit into the open sea and then you get the first glimpse of what Subnautica Below Zero really is all about. The bladder fish, good source of water, bit of limestale outcrops there, good source of materials, get some titanium, get some copper, get some lead and lithium, let's make our way to the surface. Let's see if we can get one of those floating packs of ice. And there you see the penguins, the cute indigenous life forms of the planet. More meteors coming down. Your sister Sam is now dropping an escape pod. And then it all starts. So a good sort of story-led, very sort of linear, lets you think that you're getting into the game, but it's going you down a path so the game can really start. I really like it. Subnautica Below Zero is shaping up to be a really good game. Um, and as a result of this, I'm going to be doing a hell of a lot more videos. So, I've been Ricardo, this has been Subnautica Below Zero, and the opening sequence, and player opening sequence as well. We're getting our life pod being dropped into the water. Check back for more videos on how to make certain items in this new um, Arctic and Below Zero and frosty environment within Subnautica. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and check back for more videos in the series.